for your questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, seven minutes goes by fast. I'll jump right into it, Mr. Secretary. Uh, a major breakdown of the U.S. immigration system is the failure to consider the fate of the children of long-term visa holders. Now, these are children who have parents who have applied for a green card and are in the U.S. with legal status, legal status, but their application remains stuck in years-long backlogs. And as a result, there are currently over 250,000 children who are at risk of aging out from the protection of their parents' lawful status, lawful status. When these children turn 21, they face the impossible decision of leaving their families to self-deport to a country that is often completely foreign to them or remaining in the United States undocumented and living in the shadows. To address this problem, I introduced the Americans, America's Children Act to help fix this often overlooked inequity in our immigration system. And I'm proud to say that it enjoys from the start bipartisan support, including from uh, my colleague Senator Paul, member of this committee. But as you well know, Mr. Secretary, we have a lot more work to do to clear backlogs and reduce processing times at USCIS. That's partly why I'm pleased to see the $765 million included in the, pres in the President's budget request this year to help work through the processing backlog. Secretary Mayorkas, do you think it makes sense for our immigration system to allow children to be brought here lawfully on their parents' visa, raised and educated here, oftentimes for decades, but not have a clear opportunity to become an American citizen because their parents' green card petition is stuck in the backlog? Uh, Senator Padilla, I, I think the legislation that you proposed is one element of a much-needed, um, massive uh, fix to our broken immigration system. Thank you. And uh, can you please explain what the $765 million requested for USCIS will be used for and whether it will be sufficient to work through the backlogs? Uh, Senator Padilla, the $765 million is comprised of two parts. One, to address the backlog, if I'm not mistaken, and two, to hire additional asylum officers to implement the asylum officer rule that will take uh, effect uh, later this month, which we believe is a, um, a very much needed uh, reform uh, to the asylum system. That will, that will not be enough uh, to put U.S. citizenship and immigration services on firm financial footing. Uh, that agency was dismantled. It was on the brink of bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. It is funded predominantly through the fees it collects, and that is why we are very focused on a fee rule. Uh, the fee rule calibrates the fees that we charge uh, applicants. It calibrates them according to the costs incurred right. in administering uh, those benefits. And There's there has not, it's, it's a law that a fee rule is to be promulgated, I believe, every two years. And it's been over six years, okay. I think, if, uh, that a fee rule has been promulgated, which is why we're so focused so on there's, it. There's two issues I want to get to, so I just ask that whatever additional resources uh, that you would need to successfully clear the backlogs, share that with my office, share that with this committee. We want to be helpful. Uh, second, I want to highlight FEMA's Emergency Food and Shelter Program, which provides funding for NGOs as well as state and local jurisdictions along our border. I was disappointed to see that the amount requested in the budget for this part of the program was only $24 million. And as you know, uh, border area local governments and NGOs doing this kind of work provide critical services that are typically functions of the federal government, such as temporary shelter, food, transportation for families and adults who are released from government custody. Without proper funding, support operations will inevitably be scaled back. So my question is a simple yes, no. Uh, will you commit to working with me to ensure that we have the necessary resources to meet the needs of organizations and local governments providing humanitarian assistance to vulnerable migrant families and individuals? Yes, I will, Senator, and that is actually one of the six pillars in our plan that we um, uh, detailed in the memorandum I published. Great. Thank you. And the final area uh, deals with uh, wildfires. You know, historically, the Stafford Act, which governs FEMA's disaster efforts, 
has not been explicitly inclusive of wildfires, which are increasing in frequency and severity throughout the West, not just in California. Due to the unique nature of wildfires, California has experienced tremendous difficulty after catastrophic wildfires in getting approval for federal disaster assistance. Most recently, the Calder Fire had victims who were denied individual assistance despite the fact that more than 1,000 structures were destroyed and despite President Biden himself having visited the area and committed assistance from the administration. Secretary Mayorkas, will you commit to working with my office to ensure that the disaster assistance needs of all communities impacted by wildfires are more fully supported by DHS and FEMA? Yes, I will, Senator, and we have a number of different efforts underway in that, in that regard, understanding, very well understanding that both the frequency and the gravity of wildfires that this country is experiencing um, uh, has, uh, have increased. And in fact, our department is working with the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Interior in, in setting up a commission to address uh, this very threat uh, to the security of our homeland. Okay, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Chell, I'll reserve my further question for the second round. 